Don, let's talk Inter and Liverpool. Liverpool, seven of seven uh, in the Champions League so far. Um, Ajax, of course, play next week. They can also be seven or seven. Mm -hmm. Bayern were perfect, of course, and they they were held by Salzburg. Um, Were you impressed? 2-0 2-0 win at the San Siro. We're more impressed by the result, the performance, because the narr- well, we're kind of getting two different narr- narrative in Italy. is like, wow, we were, didn't expect Inter to play so well. Mm. And then last night, you and I were on the FC show. Yep. Stevie Nichol, not impressed at all by Inter and <laughs> thought it was uh, pretty easy and straightforward. I thought Inter for- played well. I thought between both boxes, I thought they were fantastic. I thought their setup was a problem for Liverpool when Jurgen Klopp plays 4-3-3. It was a stretch for Harvey Elliott, for Thiago to try and get out to the wing-backs. Um, I thought Dunfries and Perisic were excellent. I think the majority of play, as I said, between the boxes came from Inter. Granted, they never really looked like scoring. They rattled the crossbar and Dzeko had sort of one or two little opportunities, but Canate was excellent. Van Dijk got voted man of the match. It tells you how much or a defensive display it was from Liverpool. And then what happened was they grew into the game. They got the goal from Firmino and then all of a sudden Jurgen Klopp went with experience and know-how. Jordan Henderson came on. Luis Diaz, I thought, was direct. He was like an animal. He was getting the ball. He was just taking players on. He was taking into all the way back. And then you could see, I think, the golf in class in the end. But I think for large parts, watching that game, I thought Liverpool were under stress and, and defending at times very, very deeply and found it really uncomfortable to play in San Siro. Yeah, I mean, I think both things can be true. You can say Liverpool deserve to win because they got the goals. Yep. Um, I also haven't seen Inter play like this this season. Um, and it seems it seems silly. And I know that the, you know, Muppet Show is going to come out like, oh, well, what does it say about Inter if you know, this is their best game of the season and they still lose at home 2-0, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> you know, but no, actually, Inter played many different ways this season. I did not think that they could go out, match Liverpool uh, for intensity. Yep. Those switches mm-hmm. between the fullbacks, which Van Dijk after the game said, you know, they were switching the ball, which is kind of like what Liverpool's supposed yeah. to do, what they do so effectively. And Klopp touched upon this too, and they were creating one-on-ones in, in wide areas with with the fullbacks. Yeah. Um, so I, I think Inter showed that they can play like this. Now, obviously, they need to finish better. There, there's other chances where, you know, the, the, the Perisic one where he blows through on, on the left and he, he puts the ball, he just maybe hits it too hard yeah. or... You know, doesn't find Lautaro. Maybe Lautaro should have been should have done better there. Yeah. Um, the the, the Konate one that, that, that you mentioned, where, where I thought he did a great job yeah. on on Jekyll. There was a lot of little chances like that, which I think could have turned the game for Inter. But there was lots of half chances for Inter. Yeah, it was like they were one pass away from scoring or really creating an unbelievable chance. There was so many bits where you're watching, going, Konate had to defend there, Van but- Dijk had to defend there. But I also thought they were they were so courageous as well in the way they played. They they, they looked so confident. They they don't normally even in say the when you know sometimes they raise the intensity, sometimes mm. they beat you in other different ways. I hadn't seen this side. It's almost as if Simone Inzaghi said, "We need to play this way in Europe against Liverpool yeah. to to have success because if we play at a slower pace or whatever, it's not going to work. You know, we're not gifted enough to do that." Yeah. And they bought into it, and I think they come out of this really, really emboldened, really strengthened. Same. And for those who forget by the way, and I know it's, oh, look, the San Siro champions of Italy, oh, this all you got and all this stuff. Um, lest we forget, Inter lost their manager in mm-hmm. the summer, who you know people thought was the architect of everything, and in many ways he was. Yeah. They lost their best player, Lukaku. Their second best player, Nicola Barella, was injured for this game, and the third best player, uh, sorry, not injured, he was suspended, yeah. and the third best player, um, Ashraf Hakimi, now plays for Paris Saint-Germain. Yeah. Yeah, I take three guys out of a well-drilled unit and yeah. you are basically rebuilding from scratch. Of course. And that's what they did. And you're playing against the mighty Liverpool. So there was lots of contradictions after the game where people are going, oh, is, is, if, if Inter played so well, how come they didn't score? How come they didn't trouble a goalkeeper? How come they had no shots on target? Well, you can still play yeah. well in the game. You can still dominate the ball and cause Liverpool problems and cause t- big teams problems. Uh, I had a, about this whole shots on target stat because yeah. obviously uh, Firmino's goal was the first yep. shot on target. Yeah, 75 minutes. Sometimes statistics are relevant. Sometimes you have to put them in context. Mm. Somebody, and I'll reveal who it is in a minute, but he's from Newcastle oh. and he scored a couple goals in his career. He always thought this whole thing about getting the ball on target is the worst thing you can tell a striker when you're shooting on goal. Right. Because if you think about getting the ball on target, you're going to hit it to the middle of the goal or where the keeper can get it. Yeah. You don't want... so. It's a terrible metric to judge. Mm. And the person who told me this was Mr. Alan Shear, yeah. who I think 
knows a thing or two about scoring just a goals. Bit, you know? yeah, just a little bit. So, and uh, if you hit the crossbar, the framework, that doesn't count as being on target. No, so let's I pretend mean, that never happened. Yeah, dear. Um, I was struck by what Van Dyke said uh, afterwards, where he said, before the game, Klopp told us, you know, we have to know how to suffer. And I'm wondering, and he said, then we did suffer in this game. Yep. Um, I'm wondering, though, between this, between the Burnley game, and it was rainy and messy and Brownhill and all the bad stuff that comes when you go to Turf Moor, yeah. uh, which Liverpool gutted out and won. Between the Leicester game where they won 2-0, I'm wondering, like, are we seeing a slightly different dimension of Liverpool here where they're winning ugly mm. in a way that, you know, before they were willing, br- winning brilliantly. Yeah. But it's, it's a strength, isn't it, for Liverpool? Absolutely. Of course it's a strength. You can go to San Siro and keep a clean sheet and suffer and come away with two goals. It's incredible. And you go to Burnley, horrible, windy, driving, diagonal rain where you're freezing cold and you go there and you win. And I think the difference from Liverpool from probably the start of the season where they were quite licky, they were quite giving up a lot of goals and a lot of chances. Now they've really tightened up, in my opinion. I think they've got really confident at the back. There was always this little feeling where you can get at Liverpool. You can get one or two chances. I think now with, with Van Dijk being back to his best, it took him a little bit of time. And Canate, Matip, whoever you like, whichever partnership you like and you've got Trent and Robbo you've got Fabinho one of the best holding midfield players in Europe they're a strong side well thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube for more sports highlights and analysis be sure to download the ESPN app and for live streaming premium content and let's not forget as well ESPN FC seven days a week subscribe to ESPN plus